first of all, I want to give thanks to those that clicked on the Cash App, the Venmo, or the PayPal link and dropped a seed and donated to this channel. I really appreciate you. You know who you are. Big shout out to you. I really don't have to mention your name because, again, you know who you are. But today's topic is transference of spirits from one person to another. It's not always wise to lay hands on people to pray for them. I know that there are zealous people out there that feel that they can pray for people, they can save the world, they can heal people from sickness and disease, uh, you can heal people from mental illness. Just lay your hands on them, anoint them with oil, and pray with them. Spiritually, that's an extremely dangerous move. You may feel you have the faith to do that, but it's dangerous. Are you aware that unclean spirits can transfer from one person to another? Are you aware of that? Are you aware that you can transfer spirits from one person to another? By you laying hands on someone, praying for them, and if you are not right in your spirit, if you are not right in your mind, you can actually take on the spirit of that person that is possessed. You're not as strong as you think. I'm going to repeat that again. You are not as strong as you think. Now, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. And I'll expound on them as I go. But you have to be careful for those of you out there that's um, spiritualist people that are Christians and feel that you're saved and you're sanctified and you have the faith and belief that you can just lay hands on people, you think you have a spiritual gift, when in reality, you don't. Because I made a video in the past and I spoke on that, about people that all of a sudden you go to church, you start reading your Bible, you accept Christ in your life, and now you have the spirit of discernment, you can now cast out devils, and now you're having dreams and visions, and I completely understand that scripture where it says, in the last days, I'll pour up my spirit upon all flesh and my sons and daughters will prophesy. I understand that. But you cannot live a whole life being normal. And then all of a sudden you become a so-called Christian. And now you see spirits, you see demons in people, and it does not bother you. That's something you have to grow into. You just can't see a spirit and all of a sudden you look at it like you would look at your next door neighbor. It's not that simple. Those are people that are deceived and trying to deceive others. And I'm sure you know in your heart of hearts that you are not dealing with demonic spirits or demonic entities because you can really mess yourself up. And I strongly believe that that could be one of the major reasons why so many people now have mental health issues. So many people now are bipolar and schizophrenic because you tampered with something that you really didn't understand. You dabbled in something that you weren't really strong enough to handle. So again, you have to be careful when trying to pray for people. It could be a loved one. It could be a friend. It could be a stranger. And that's one of the bad habits that so-called Christians have is that they want to lay hands on people that they don't even know. You have no idea what that person is dealing with in their life. But yet you, a new Christian, want to lay hands on them. 
you, a person that live unrighteously seven days a week, or better yet, six days a week, and on Sunday, you're now a saint and you're saved. You're sanctified. You had abortions. You're living a homosexual lifestyle. You steal, you kill. But yet, you think that you're saved. You lie. You cheat. You commit adultery or fornication. But yet, you believe you're saved. And you're laying hands on people, not realizing not only can you receive unclean spirits from them, but they can receive unclean spirits from you. So it's not good to lay your hands on anyone and you're not spiritually strong. And it's not good for you to allow people to lay hands on you, even when it comes to ministers. You know how sometimes you go to church and these preachers, these evangelists want to come and lay hands on people and they just constantly lay hands they touch one person and then they touch you and then they touch someone else. In many cases, they're transferring spirits. Because that evangelist, that preacher, that so-called pastor is not right. And we see in the media today that there are so many so-called pastors that are arrested for child pornography or molesting children or men having sex with boys, or the women having sex with a woman. But then they're holy and righteous in church, where church has become a money-making gimmick, a money-making scheme. The first scripture I want to read is taken from 1 Timothy 5 and 22. Just one verse. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sin. Keep thyself pure. Lay hands suddenly. In other words, don't be so quick to lay hands on someone. And it says, neither be partaker of other men's sin. How can you be partakers of other men's sin? If you're not physically sinning with that person, you can become a partaker in other men's sin by agreeing with them. Like in the case where Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. There are so many people that agreed with Will Smith. They supported Will Smith. That's partaking in another man's sin. And I was surprised to hear preachers, pastors, one which is T.D. Jakes, talk about how Will Smith slapped the taste out of Chris Rock's mouth. That's not becoming of a holy and righteous man. So, neither be partaker of other men's sin. And then it says, keep thyself pure. The next scripture is taken from the book of Matthew, the 12th chapter, reading the 43rd to the 45th verse. And it reads as follows. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. So that's telling you that when an unclean spirit has left one body, it looks for another body to possess. He walketh through dry places. Dry meaning there's no Holy Spirit in you to keep him out. That's dry places. And there are many dry places in the church today. There are people that come to church, 
confess their sins, go back out into the world. There's nothing to keep them. They have not received the spirit of Yah. So the Bible says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, this is what the spirit says. I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. These are people that go to church, get delivered from sin and from whatever demonic influence that they deal with in their life. But yet they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They are still empty. He findeth it empty, swept and garnished. In other words, you clean your life up. For a very short period of time. But yet you have not received God's Holy Spirit. The 44th verse says again, then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. The 45th verse says, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Now, have you noticed that people that go to church, that confess their sins, that become saved and sanctified or filled with the God, uh, God's precious gift of the Holy Spirit, and then something happened in their life? To cause them to backslide. It could be something like losing a parent, losing a father or a mother, brother or sister. And they question, why would God allow that to happen? Why would God allow my mother to die? Why didn't he heal her? Why didn't he deliver her? So now they say I'm mad at God. There is no God. And the Bible said, a fool saith in his heart, there is no God. So that person become angry at God because he or she lost a loved one. So that person backslides, go back out into the world, decide to get high decide to start drinking themselves or maybe even just having illicit sex out of anger, out of spite, thinking that you're hurting God. But in reality, you're hurting no one but yourself. Because that same spirit that was attached to you before you got saved, that same spirit is looking to return back to its home. So what it does, it goes and gets other spirits to come with him so that next time it won't be so easy for you to get rid of them. So that other spirit got seven other spirits or roommates more wicked than himself. And he comes back and they dwell there. And the Bible says, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man or woman is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. The last and final scripture I want to read is taken from the book of Acts, the 19th chapter, reading the 13th to the 17th verse. And it reads as follow. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, 
we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now, these are vagabond Jews, they're exorcists that took upon themselves to call over someone that was possessed with demons. Because they saw what the disciples were doing. They heard about what Jesus was doing, so yet they felt they had that same kind of power. And you have certain so-called witches and spiritualists that feel because of the fact that they communicate, they think, with ancestors or spirit guides, that they also have this kind of power. But don't realize that they're walking on dangerous ground. It reads again, Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. The 14th verse says, And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Now, I'm reading these scriptures to show you that spirits can transfer from one person to another. If you are not spiritually grounded, if you are not strong, and if you don't have the Holy Spirit of Yah, you are in a position to be possessed by tampering into things that you really don't understand. And notice, the spirit can speak. It speaks through the persons that is possessing. Another thing too is, notice, the spirit knows who Jesus is. And he knows the apostles of Christ. But you have those that think they have knowledge and say that Jesus don't exist. They say Jesus is not real. They say that Jesus is plagiarized. A fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The 15th verse said again, And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? The 16th verse says, And the man, now this is putting a distinction between the evil spirit and the man. First the evil spirit was speaking. And now in the 16th verse it says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I'm going to read that again because when you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, when you are not the witness of Christ or of the Holy Spirit, you set yourself up to be attacked by demons. Evil spirits will use the body of a possessed soul to attack you. You'll think that the person is attacking you. You'll think that the person is out of their mind, but yet they're possessed and you have a possessed individual attacking you or being used by an evil spirit to inflict harm upon you against their will. That 16th verse says again, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. He leaped on the ones that were trying to cast them out with no power. Leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them 
so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. The 17th verse says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Now, I want to share a situation that happened in church one day where this young lady came in and she was possessed with a devil. And I know her personally, so I know that this wasn't a fake thing. It was me, her, and maybe two other friends. After we left church, we decided to, you know, go to Denny's and and eat and stuff like that. And we were kind of church church hopping because there was different uh, revivals going on in different places at that time. But she started acting really, really strange. And I noticed in her face started getting dark. She's like a yellow girl, man. She's like, or better yet, red. She's a red ball. And her face started getting getting dark and she started cursing and uh, she was spitting at people, people that she didn't know. And so I said, you know what? I said, there's a revival, a shut-in. It actually was a shut-in, all-night shut-in, like where they uh, shut in. You know, they have services and then at 12 o'clock they shut in, lock the doors and all people do, all they do is just pray and fast all night. So I said, there's a shutting at um at Living Water. Let's go there. And we went, we took her to Living Water, Church of God in Christ. And we walked in there, we were sitting there, and, and this is right before the doors were locked. And she just started speaking out, man, against people, talking about people in the church, man. So the pastor of that church came forward and he says, you know, he invited everybody to come to the altar and pray. And this is a short, I'm, I'm going to show you how, how quickly spirits can jump from one person to another person. And a lot of times, a spirit can jump on a person that is fearful. Okay, because if you're in a setting where um, a prayer service, like where they're like casting out demons or rebuking spirits or whatnot, you have to really be careful um, because if you're fearful, if you're weak, those spirits can also jump on you. And that's why sometimes in church, you can go to the wrong church and end up leaving with the wrong spirit because a spirit in that church attached itself to you when you open yourself up. Because many people think this is church, so I ain't got nothing to worry about because this is a sacred place. But a lot of these churches aren't sacred. A lot of them aren't holy because the pastor, the root of that church or the foundation of that church is not built on holiness. The foundation of that church could be built on uh, somebody that's, that wasn't content with waiting and decide to go against their pastor and go out and start their own thing and they weren't ready. So they start that new church. Or you may have someone decide to start a church for monetary reasons because they have a, a, a doctrine that they want to promote, but yet the church won't allow it because it's against scriptural. So there's a lot of reasons why a church could be considered unholy, right? Or unsacred. So you could go to church and leave with a bad spirit if you go to the wrong church. Right? So you really, really, really have to be careful. But anyway, um, when the when the pastor invited everybody to the altar, we started praying. The girl, she was like sitting in the pews. She didn't go up for prayer. All of a sudden, she started screaming and kicking and between the pews. So I seen uh, the pastor get up and go back there. And then this one preacher, Reverend um, Matthews, he went, and went back there. And she was between the pews and was scratching and biting and clawing. It was like, no, her voice changed. Seriously, her voice changed, man. And um, they were like praying over her and, and, uh, and uh, binding that spirit and casting it out. And then this girl named Joyce, this woman named Joyce, she was sitting over by, and I'm making a long story short, she was sitting over by the, um, the drums, like where the drums were, where the musicians sit. She was sitting over at the front, the front 
pew and she was holding this baby and she was rocking back and forth. She was afraid. And then after they prayed, it took it took forever to get that spirit out of that girl, right? But once that spirit left her, once that spirit left that young lady, everything was quiet. Everybody was drained. I mean, the pastor, uh, Reverend Matthews, everybody was just drained, man, because it drains you. That's why you have to be prayed and fasted up. If you remember in the scriptures, when uh, disciples came to Jesus and asked Jesus, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And then Jesus ended up telling him this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. And you have so many people in the church that are not prayed up and they're not fasted up, but yet they would run into someone with the demonic spirit and try to pray that spirit out. They lay hands on that person and try to bind that spirit and cast it out and they're not strong enough. They're not prayed up enough. They're not fasted up enough. And then that spirit end up jumping on you. Or if you invite them into your home, because now you have all these people with these little prayer meetings in their homes, you're inviting bad spirits into your house. You wonder why things are moving around in your home. You wonder why your children are having nightmares. Because you invited those bad spirits into your home. But... Joyce was sitting over by the drums, was holding that baby. And after that spirit came out of that young lady, all of a sudden we heard, ah, and we looked over and she was like crawling on the floor like she was a snake, just yelling that loud sound like she was being tormented of pain. She was just yelling loud, just Wiggling on the floor like a snake. And the pastor looked at her. <laughs> Reverend Matthew looked at her. And everybody was just so drained. They couldn't do nothing. You know. They couldn't do nothing with that spirit. And that girl left there with that spirit. And I kind of sat back and observed her for a while. Afterwards, whenever I seen her come to church. And she was not the same. Her energy was not the same. So... You have to really, really be careful, even if you're in a service where they praying and got these prayer lines going on and they're telling you about these hundred dollar lines and these thousand dollar lines and these five hundred dollar lines. Beware of that, man. Don't be so quick to attach yourself to that, you know, because you got people that will attach their spirits to certain churches. You know, you go to a place and you feel comfortable because they're they're they are in agreement with your own doctrine and you attach yourself to that. And before you realize it, you have a bad spirit. You know, you're not the same. You change. So you have to really be careful when you allow people to lay hands on you or you lay hands on others. Like the scripture says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partaker of other men's sin. Keep thyself pure. In other words, keep your conscience, keep your mouth, your mouth. I didn't mean to say mouth, but keep your mouth. It was meant to be said. Keep your mouth, keep your conscience clear. Keep it pure. Your motive and intention, your thoughts, keep it pure. Don't involve yourself in other people's mess. Don't take sides. Don't be quick to take sides, you know, and because by you taking side, that's you also being a partaker in other men's sins, because now you're promoting that you're encouraging that. Just like you have these female in church that encourage women to leave their husbands because they're miserable and don't have no husband. So they would encourage you to leave your man. And now you're now miserable. Your house now is in an uproar. Divided. Because you listen to someone that had no power. And that was more than likely jealous of you in the first place. But that's another topic. But again, the scripture says in 1 Timothy 5 and 22. 
lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other man's sins. Keep thyself pure. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe. Until next time, I'm fearless.